day of a year in miracles and today we are on a course in miracles workbook lesson 170 and today's lesson is there is no cruelty in God and none in me no one attacks without intent to hurt this can have no exception when you think that you attack in self-defense you mean that to be cruel is protection you are safe because of cruelty. You mean that you believe to hurt another brings you freedom. And you mean that to attack is to exchange the state in which you are for something better, safer, more secure from dangerous invasion and from fear. How thoroughly insane is the idea that to defend from fear is to attack? For here is fear begot and fed with blood, to make it grow and swell and rage, and thus is fear protected, not escaped. Today we learn a lesson which can save you more delay and needless misery than you can possibly imagine. It is this, you make what you defend against, and by your own defense against it, is it real and inescapable. Lay down your arms, and only then do you perceive it false. It seems to be the enemy without that you attack. Yet your defense sets up an enemy within, an alien thought at war with you, depriving you of peace, splitting your mind into two camps, which seem wholly irreconcilable. For love now has an enemy, an opposite, and fear, the alien, now needs your defense against the threat of what you really are. If you consider carefully the means by which your fancied self-defense proceeds on its imagined way, you will perceive the premises on, on which the idea stands. First, it is obvious ideas must leave their source, for it is you who makes attack and must have first conceived of it. Yet you attack outside yourself and separate your mind from him who is to be attacked. With perfect faith, the split you made is real. Next are the attributes of love bestowed upon its enemy. For fear becomes your safety and protector of your peace, to which you turn for solace and escape from doubts about your strength and hope of rest in dreamless quiet. And as love is shorn of what belongs to it and it alone, love is endowed with attributes of fear. For love would ask you to lay down all defense as merely foolish, and your arms indeed would crumble into dust, for such they are. With love as enemy, must cruelty become a god? And gods demand that those who worship them obey their dictates and refuse to question them. Harsh punishment is meted out relentlessly to those who ask if the demands are sensible or even sane. It is their enemies who are unreasonable and insane while they are always merciful and just. Today we look upon this cruel God dispassionately and we note that though his lips are smeared with blood and fire seems to flame from him, he is but made of stone. He can do nothing. We need not defy his power. He has none. And those who see him, in him their safety have no guardian, no strength to call upon in danger, and no mighty warrior to fight for them. This moment can be terrible but it can also be the time of your release from abject slavery. You make a choice, standing before this idol, seeing him exactly as he is. Will you restore to love what you have sought to wrest from it and lay before the mindless piece of stone? Or will you make another idol to replace it? For the God of cruelty takes many forms, another, can be found. Yet do not think that fear is the escape from fear. Let us remember what the text has stressed about the obstacles to peace. 
the final one, the hardest to believe, is nothing. And a seeming obstacle with the appearance of a solid block, impenetrable, fearful, and beyond surmounting, is the fear of God himself. Here is the basic premise which enthrones the thought of fear as God. For fear is loved by those who worship it, and love appears to be invested now with cruelty. Where does the totally insane belief in gods of vengeance come from? Love has not confused its attributes with those of fear, yet must the worshipers of fear perceive their own confusion in fear's enemy, its cruelty as now a part of love. And what becomes more fearful than the heart of love itself? The blood appears to be upon his lips. The fire comes from him. And he is terrible above all else, cruel beyond conception, striking down all who acknowledge him to be their God. The choice you make today is certain. For you look for the last time upon the, this bit of carven stone you made and call it God no longer. You have reached this place before, but you have chosen that this cruel God remain with you in still another form. And so the fear of God returned with you. This time, you leave it there, and you return to a new world, unburdened by its weight, beheld not by its sightless eyes, but in the vision that your choice restored to you. Now do your eyes belong to Christ, and he looks through them. Now your voice belongs to God and echoes his. And now your heart remains at peace forever. You have chosen him in place of idols, and your attributes given by your creator are restored to you at last. The call for God is heard and answered. Now has fear made way for love, as God himself replaces cruelty. Father, we are like you. No cruelty abides in us, for there is none in you. Your peace is ours, and we bless the world with what we have received from you alone. We chose again and make our choice for all our brothers, knowing they are one with us. We bring them your salvation as we have received it now, and we give thanks to them who render us complete. In them, we see your glory, and in them, we find our peace. Holy are we because your holiness has set us free, and we give thanks. Amen. And that is it. That is our lesson for today. In A Course in Miracles, lesson 170, there is no cruelty in God and none in me. And so to, to wrap this up, you know, a little bit, it's talking about idols, right? And what does that really mean? I mean, if we make God an idol and we ex expect God to protect us, right? And we pray and bow down and, oh, please protect us. And then something terrible happens, you know, and we think, God did this awful thing to me and I'm a victim of the world I see and how cruel can God be and now I hate you for it. You know, that's that whole making God an idol. And so then what do we do? We look for another idol. Oh, we fall in love. Maybe it's that person that we have this relationship with and now they become our God, right? Our idol. Oh, if I do all of these wonderful things and I sacrifice myself to you and I give you so much, certainly you'll love me forever. And then what happens? The relationship falls apart, right? And then, oh, you did this terrible thing to me, and oh, you hurt me, and oh, you broke my heart. And guess what? Because we made them an idol. We made them our God, just like we made the God outside of us our God, and then we condemned him for not making our world wonderful and happy, right? And then when that relationship falls apart, you're going to choose another idol, right? Maybe it's the job. Oh, this job is great, and it's giving me so much joy and happiness and feeding my children, and what happens the day you get laid off? That God is gone too, just like the rest of them. So this Course in Miracles lesson is saying, don't find another idol to worship. Go inside and find that place inside of yourself where you are connected with that one mind of God, right? And have that strength and power that belongs to you 
that is yours in truth. And then find that peace and forgiveness so that you can offer it and share it with your brothers. Because those brothers that are in your life that you're making the, them idols, they don't want to be your idol. They just want to be loved. And so when we can find that peace and strength inside of ourselves, connect with that one source of love inside of ourselves, share that with our brothers, then there are no expectations, right? And we don't expect anybody to be an idol. We don't expect anybody to make our, us happy because we create our own happiness by connecting to that source within us, that source of love and that source of one mind. And then we can share that with our brothers and see the Christ in them. And that's what it means to connect with that Christ mind. Because when we go inside, connect to our source, and then we can see our brothers as one with us. That's what that Christ mind means. Namaste. I connect and I acknowledge the Christ in you. That's what that's all about. So that's today's lesson. There is no cruelty in God and none in me. And that's our lesson for today. And uh, tomorrow begins our review. So we will be going back and reviewing all of these previous, I think, 10 lessons that we've done. So we've got a, another maybe week of review after this. So thank you for joining today, everyone. Good to see you here on the live feed. Hi, honey. Nice to see you here. Good morning, Anthony. Great to see you here this morning. Hey, Greg. Good to see you on the live feed. Good morning, Mark. Hi, Pam. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Surinder Ajit. Nice to see you. Good morning, my sissy. You must be driving to work and listening to the Course in Miracles lesson this morning. Uh, nice to see all of you. Hi, Cindy. Good morning, John. Good to see you here. Hi, Ganymede. Nice to see you here. Hey, Giovanni. Nice to see you. So that's today's lesson, the Course in Miracles workbook lesson 170. And I will be back again tomorrow morning to start our review for our next uh, workbook lesson, which will go on to 171 tomorrow, but it'll be a review. So I look forward to seeing you all here tomorrow morning. And until then, have a great day. And think about the lesson today. There is no cruelty in God and none in me. So who are you making into an idol in your world? Hmm good thing to think about today. All right. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.